So the first thing I really want to do, and like this is my own little startup file, so I already made some adjustments to the workspaces and brushes and uh, the theme also, like I, I like to just customize my theme in like some various ways. So I have my general workspace over here, which generally has like a little more like a relatively big 3D viewport and a nice and uh, big outliner because uh, at some points, I just when I generally work on production files, the outliner turns to tem tends to become pretty big. So there's going to be a lot of objects and collections, and the deeper your outliner will be, the better. So by default, I think there's just an outliner right over here, which is just way too small for the purposes I need. And then over here, there's a little time timeline over here, which I can scale down or up and then just uh, change the editor as well. I'm also like throughout my modeling process, I'm going to have like some custom menus and pie menus. So for example, I made like a little pie menu over here to just like switch between my most used editors. So I can immediately go from the timeline to the dope sheet or any other one. So I can go to the info editor and just have a look over here. This is just my personal setup to speed up my process a bit more. So instead of just going into this menu and switching between editors slowly, I can just do it immediately and seamlessly. Uh, what's first? So pretty much the first thing I want to do is, I have this already, the sphere over here, which is nice, but um, I want to block out the character. So get a general sense of the proportions and the three dimensional shapes before going further into detail. Uh, after that, I will go uh, likely detail the model as far as possible in terms of the models. So I can get like, essentially we get everything we want out of the 3D design. And then after that, there will be a cleanup session where I'm just going to go over it. Like I'm probably not going to sculpt the character because it's really just such simplified shapes that there's no real need to go into scope mode and use dynamic topology and the remesher and all that stuff. It's really kind of overkill. We don't need that fine control over the shapes. We can, uh, I can mostly just box model it and then use scope mode for various small little tasks and tools. Um, but still, I, I like to differentiate the, the modeling process into like the the initial sculpt uh, like the blocking and then the sculpting and then having that detached from the actual production model so even though we're going to box model everything it's still going to be the sculpt so later on uh, we can just go in and clean up the model do some topology tweaks redirect some loops here and there anything that will be most optimal for the animation for getting any deformations we need but during the sculpting step, it's really just about getting the shapes and all the details in there, anything that we want to have in the 3D model. So and that was just like a little rundown on like what I want to, like how I would approach this. Um, I also can recommend definitely to save regularly and with multiple files um, and have like autosave on like, I, I have uh, blender set up so that it like auto saves every like two or three minutes so I never really lose any progress if it crashes uh, which it might as well do because I'm using like <laughs> in development version of 2.83 to get to essentially test all the latest features but also be at the mercy of all the crashes and bugs so we can already start making a new collection over here um, I already set up like a, a main first collection over here called Settler. And then the, in, the, in that collection, we have this little, it's essentially the default cube, but I just subdivided it three times and turned it into a sphere. So that's a way better default cube for most of the projects that I start up with. Um, and then I have another collection over here, which is just called Helpers. It's usually just excluded, uh, disabled rather like the terminology changed a bit over the over time so it's disabling a collection and in that collection we really just have this little empty over here let me actually check over here if i can turn on screencast keys that would be amazing yes i can 
So you can at least see what I'm doing over here. Can I move it a little bit to the side? That would be great. Now actually I'm just gonna keep it here because otherwise it's gonna clip into the toolbar at some point. Awesome. Uh, also one thing you might notice, I already set up like a little pie menu over here to change uh, the different UI elements of the editors. So I don't have to press T and N anymore. I just have it set press, um, I have just have it set to N. So essentially whatever I'm doing, I can just disable any of these UI elements just with one key, which is kind of useful. Uh, it's still relatively new. I just set it up, but I might not keep it. Let's see how annoying this actually is to get used to. But yeah, I'll just keep the, oh God. I just keep the screencast keys over here on the side. Apparently the, the add-on is not working that well anymore. Uh, anyway, we have the little helpers over here with a uh, empty in the center. This is great if you want to use like mirror modifiers and you always want to have them centered. So I'm just, I just usually have one of these in my files. And then I can just create another collection over here and I just call this uh, reference. And what I'm gonna do over here now is I'm just gonna have my little file browser over here and I can just drag and drop the turnaround into it. <laughs> it's, it's not working. <laughs> ah, here we go. So now we have this guy over here. You can just scale this up with the nice little em reference empties. You have these little widgets over here on the side to resize and, and adjust the, the empties, but you can also turn them off. It's usually what, what I do. I like to just use the, so here in the Gizmos tab, you can just disable all of them, any, any one of them that you don't need. For me, it's usually all of them. They're just kind of in the way, unfortunately, uh, but. Yeah, at least the transform gizmo is kind of useful. So I can just hit, um, yeah, Alt G to reset the transforms, the the location at least, so that it's in the center. And I'm noticing that the, the it's actually kind of offset. Let me just fix that. So is this relative? Yes, it's relative. So just point minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5, and it's going to be centered actually. Let me have this at zero because we want to have the the origin of the world to be the ground level. So this is going to be definitely easier to handle. So let's just place the sphere already where we kind of want it. So this is the front view. So I'm just going to move this over to the side. Can I actually, hmm. Ah, yes, transparency. This is nice. So I can toggle this on and then I at least get to see the grid. This will help a lot for just like centering this guy. Yep. So this is ref front and then I can just duplicate this. I can set the pivot point to the 3D cursor. So we can just rotate this 90 degrees, uh, other direction from the top and then go to the right and move this all the way over here. Actually, another thing that I might point out at this point, I right now I'm still using like my own experimental key map where I changed all of the usual modal operators to the tools. So don't like the, uh, yeah, the, it, just for context because uh, otherwise it might be a bit confusing why suddenly the, the tools are actually const constantly swapping around. So that's actually how I'm modeling this right now. So yeah, now I can look from the right and the front and this is nicely aligned. It doesn't actually matter how deep you place this into. It's just important that the height is the same. Uh, I like to kind of like align it like over here with the feet and the body. So this is nicely centered. So, but you could also just align it with the face, I guess. At this point, it doesn't really matter. We can shift around stuff later on again anyway. And yeah, I can just duplicate this again and just rotating this 180 degrees. And actually there's this nice little feature in here probably. Um, huh. 
Actually, let me check. Uh, I haven't experimented much with these guys over here. So yes, we can define which fa which side is visible from these reference empties. So we could by default it's on both. So if you look at them from both sides, they're going to be visible. Uh, you can also change, I guess, the depth. I guess this is when you have multiple uh, empties on top of each other. It's like some sort of depth drawing method. So this is not something we need to bother about right now, but the side is important. So we can set it to front. And then if we, then only the front side of the empty, which is pointing backwards right now, is going to be drawn. Uh, it's going to be visible in the viewport. So if you look at it from the front, we're not going to see it. So now I can just like go back out of local view and we won't see this one. This one can also be set to front. This one can be set to front. So now, yeah. So now we only see the reference that we actually need. So yeah, this is the thing I was, uh, I was, I, I guess it is, yes. So yeah, it will need to choose between one of them if you're facing towards one of them more than the other. So if you use the depth toggles, you can set one of them to be, to have essentially priority to be in front. So that's nice. But uh, the way it works by default is, is actually fo fully okay. So yeah, this is essentially almost good to go. We can set this one to be over here from the back. Perfect. We can still adjust these later on, but um, I'm just gonna widen the outline over here a little bit. Uh, if you look at the outline, actually most visibility toggles are disabled by default because the, these are the ones that you only really need to use most of the time. It's the eye toggle to toggle viewport visibility. And this also works with uh, shortcuts like H and Alt H and all that stuff. And then there is the little check mark, which lets you disable an entire, uh, an entire collection. And this collection then can't just be unhidden with uh, with uh, H or Alt H. So this is just completely disabled. You won't be able to see it. So these two types of visibility toggles are actually kind of nice. Actually, let me, one moment. Just disconnected my mouse from charging. Okay, but the one we want to enable here right now as well is the selectability. What I want is um, I want to have the reference collection to be set as unselectable. So now if we select in the viewport, it will only select the, the objects in the settler collection or anything that is not in any collection right now. So that's kind of nice. So we don't accidentally constantly select the reference empties. So yeah, you can already see the, <laughs> the turntable is a bit off, but that's fine. So now it's really about going in and blocking out all of these different shapes. Okay, let's actually go over this just a moment more uh, before we go into the modeling. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is actually rename these guys. So this should be side. I hope it is. Yes. And this is the back. Bam. And then another thing I just noticed is that we could do it like uh, the way of drawing these little reference empties. We could do it with the side option over here, but there's also a little check mark over here called display only axis aligned. So it will, we can just select all three of these guys and hold alt and then click the check mark and it will then check mark that thing for all of them. So that's like a little hidden shortcut. This should be made way more obvious, uh, but you could also use right click and then copy to select it and it will do the same thing. So now, yes, now what this option does is it's going to display these only if the axis is perfectly aligned with the empty. 
So if we just rotate slightly outside of that axis, it's just going to immediately disappear. So if we view it from the back, we're going to see this empty from the side, this one, and the front, this one. And this is just purely based on the, the rotation of these empties. So it's, yeah, it's just going to take the Y axis as basically the front facing one. Yeah, and that's essentially it right now.